Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and today what I have for you is the Seven Artisans Photo Electric 50mm f 1.8 AF lens. Now, this is a full frame lens for the Sony E mount camera system, and it goes for an incredible $228 US as a price point. So, incredibly affordable, and it has autofocus. So, let's just get right into it and see what this lens is all about. I'm opening the box right now for the first time, and then we're gonna go do the lab testing and see what that looks like. Then we're gonna go outside and do some testing outside, and I'll show you what it can do in that environment. And then we will wrap this review up. So, let's just get right into it. Firmware updates. All right, so getting a closer look at this lens, it actually is pretty beefy. A little bit beefier than I was expecting, taking it out of the box here. Now we got a pedal style lens hood here. Take that off for now. And we also have a pinch style lens cap. Take that off. And here's what we're looking at on the front lens element. Now we have a 62 millimeter filter thread here. It's pretty nice. Now the focus ring is very, very tight. Uh, it's actually like incredibly tight, so that doesn't really feel that good to be honest with you. It is smooth, um, but it's just extremely tight. It's possible this will loosen up over time, um, so I'll have to play with it. Like I said, I'm just taking it out of the box right now. So on the side, we also have an autofocus manual focus switch, and we also have a manual aperture ring here. So you can turn this and change the aperture manually. This is also very tight, um, so you're not going to accidentally turn this, it doesn't feel like. Um, there's no click, it's just a smooth aperture throw. Now, looking at it from the back side here, we have, you know, a nice metal lens bayonet here, and we have the USB-C port for firmware updates, and you saw the included cable when I opened the box. So now, just going over a couple of key features here, it has an STM stepping motor, 11 elements in 9 groups, 2 aspherical lens elements, 2 high refraction glass elements, and an extra low dispersion glass element. It also has multi-layer coatings, it's got an 11 blade aperture diaphragm, the minimum focus distance is 1.5 feet approximately, or 50 centimeters. And the weight of this lens is a pretty beefy 0.9 pounds or 421 grams. And of course the price point, I already told you, $228 US, which is crazy affordable. So I'm very, very curious as to how this is gonna hold up optically, because I haven't watched any reviews about this lens or anything like that. Let's just get right into it. Just mount it up to the A7C2 here. And so we can get a reference as to the size. Like I said, this is a pretty beefy lens and it's a little bit easier to turn the focus ring now that it's mounted to the camera, but it's still very difficult. All right, guys, so this is recording with the 50 millimeter 1.87 Artisans lens here, and I'm touching the lens hood right now with my hand, so you can see that's about how far it is from me. So, you know, about two and a half, three feet approximately, but you can see the background blur is looking pretty good, and I'll try to get as close as I can here. Right there is the minimum focus, to, right about here is as close as I can get. So I'll move to the side so you can see the background render a little bit there. And now if I put my hand up. Works pretty good. Let's do a quick flare test. Seems to handle it pretty well. Right here is an interesting effect right there. Kind of does remind me of the Seven Artisans, how it has some interesting flaring. I wasn't sure how this lens was going to work with the flaring. I'm just playing around here to see what I can get it to do. Right there is pretty cool. So if you put the sun like right here, you're going to get that cool flaring effect if you want. Now just straight up flaring, if I do it like this, it seems to be pretty well controlled. You can see a little bit of the lens elements there. Anyway, that was just a quick flare test. So as far as the autofocus works, it seems to do a really good job in video. It doesn't seem to be very choppy, which was kind of surprising. I thought it was going to be. And the IAF also works great on the Sony a7C II. As you can see here, it is focusing on my eye. Um, I'm looking at the screen now. All right, guys, just want to do a quick like star flare test so you can see what the 11 blade aperture produces here. Pretty darn cool. You can see a little bit of flaring too. This is at f16, by the way. 
All right, guys, let's go over some lab photos really quick, starting with the regular like full frame test here so we can check corner sharpness and stuff like that. So if you look up here on the top left, we have EXIF data. Now we're looking at obviously 50 millimeter, but this is at F1.8 and this is what it looks like. So you can see the dollar bill is extremely sharp. Let's check the corner sharpness. Wow. That's very, very impressive. The corners are pretty much razor blade sharp at f1.8 on a lens that cost only $230 approximately. Down here, the sharpness is looking really good as well. Not quite as sharp as the top left corner for whatever reason. It's possible that the camera was aimed slightly downward, but I don't think so. Now looking at the uh, crayons here, it's looking good. A Little bit of that reddish looking fringing right here. Now the bokeh balls are looking pretty good. You can see it has like a little bit of that onioning effect. And I think that's just because of how many lens elements the lens has, to be honest with you. But I honestly am not 100% sure. There's a little bit of a green hue here on the outside of some of the bokeh balls. But again, guys, very well controlled. You could see the background rendering looks really good. It's nice and creamy. The seven artisans lenses that I've used in the past have had a very nice creamy um, at a focus area, and it seems like this lens has it as well. Now, if we stop down to f2.8, you can see the bokeh balls are still nice and round looking with that 11 blade circular aperture. And if we look at the dollar bill, you can see it just crisped up a little bit and just has a little bit more contrast. Um, you can see a little bit more detail coming in on the pipe cleaners now. Um, but again, this top left corner is still like razor blade sharp, which is very impressive. Now let's just stop through the rest of these. Here's F4, F5.6, F8, F11, and F16. Now if I zoom into F16, you can see it is a little bit softer due to the diffraction caused by that. Now if we go to F11, sharpens up a little bit better. Now if we get down to F8, you can see it is razor blade sharp at F8. So sweet spot is in between pretty much F2.8 and F8, I would say for maximum sharpness. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now the minimum focus distance is about 1.6 feet or 50 centimeters or so. So with autofocus, this is as close as I could get to the quarter. And this is what it looks like. See the background rendering is quite good. See the dollar bill and everything, so super blurry. And this quarter is only about six inches away distance wise from the dollar bill. So that's that full frame 50 millimeter F1.8. Now looking at the quarter, you could see it's looking pretty good. It looks a little bit soft here. It almost looks like a little like the quarter looks like a little plasticky. Um, and that's fairly normal uh, with lenses at the minimum focus distance. They tend to not be as sharp as when moved back looking at a subject like you saw in the lab scene a second ago. So it's a little more sensitive type thing at the minimum focus distance, but still looks pretty good. And I don't see any real fringing that's much of a concern. There's a very slight green, you know, fringing that I'm seeing a little bit, but it's very minimal, not really that big of a deal. Now, if we stop down to F2.8, let's zoom in here. And now we can see the quarter is looking very sharp, very sharp. So that's good. And I'm still seeing very well controlled fringing. And if we stop down to F4 here, you can see the quarter sharpened up just a little bit more. Even it has even more detail and uh, excellent, excellent sharpness at F4. Here's F5.6, still looking good. Keep an eye on those bokeh balls in the background there. Now here's F8, here's F11, and here's F16. So that's what we're looking at. And you can also see the distortion control is, is pretty well controlled here. I don't have a lens profile for this lens, and I didn't have a chance to get to a brick wall to like really test it. But if we play with the distortion and you look at the dollar bill, it's pretty good, you know, like I'm not seeing any kind of like gross distortion um, where it's like, oh, this, this distortion is out of control. I need to fix this. And this is shooting raw quality. I would say it's very well controlled, the, the distortion based on this lab test, looking at the straight lines and the verticals, horizontals and so forth. All right, so now I'm going to switch to video mode and I'm just going to do a video transition test here. And I also want to do an aperture throw while recording video. So let me just switch it to auto ISO here and then I'm going to hit record. And now I'm just going to go through the aperture manually here so you can watch what it looks like. Now that's at f1.8. It started at f16 because that's how I had the camera set in auto mode. Now I'm just going all the way back to that's f16 and now I'm back to the A mode which is auto. That's what I tend to use is the auto mode. 
All right, let's do a focus transition test here while recording video. Just going to go from the background back to the dollar bill. Let's see how it handles it. Wow. Did a really good job. And the lens is very quiet. Listen close. You can hear it a little bit, but it's pretty quiet for sure. Alrighty, now I'm going to put it back to f1.8 and at the minimum focus distance, I want to record some video here as far as focus transitions and stuff like that go. So let me hit record here, go to the dollar bill, nice and smooth, go back to the quarter, let's see if it can do it. It did it, very good. Let's go to the background here, looking good. Back to the dollar, back to the quarter. Wow, this works pretty good, guys. So tracking the quarter should lose it because of the minimum focus distance but it should reacquire it right there so I can get the door as far away as possible it's definitely struggling a little bit obviously when you get beyond the minimum focus distance but right around here seems to be working pretty good yeah it's able to keep up pretty good I'm impressed wow all right. So here's recording at 50 millimeter f1.8, and I have my arm stretched out as far as I can go. So look at that background separation. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, moving on to some real world photos here. I got these cool pedals for my mountain bike here and just took a shot to try to, you know, show them off a little bit because I'm going to be reviewing these pedals soon. And it looks really good. Now, here's one of Jace on the couch. I was watching some TV, and if I zoom in there, you could see it focused on his on the uh, glasses that themselves. But it's looking really good. Here's just one of a uh, nice like wood flag I have hanging on the wall. Here's PlayStation controller with the TV in the background. Here's another one, the Pro controller with the little fake fireplace in the background. Now here I just wanted to show you the depth of field play. I focused on the grip, and you can see the pedal back here is just like buttered out really nice. Now here's just one of the pedal car sitting outside on the ground there just to show you some depth of field play, 3D pop you can get with a lens like this. Here's just another snapshot, another snapshot of my car rack. Here's just a fire hydrant so you can see how this renders and then in you know with the background and stuff it looks pretty good. That's at a little bit of a distance. Now I got a little closer so now if we zoom in you can see the focus is on this part of the hydrant. So this part of the hydrant's a little bit soft and the background blur is looking really good. Now here's just one looking down at the hydrant. Here's just one of some, I don't even know what these are, helicopters just like hanging off on a tree. I thought it looked pretty cool. Very simplistic. Now here's one. I just wanted to show you um, some depth of field play here. So this is at f1.8 and I focused on the nail. And then here is f4 focused on the nail. So you can see just how sharp the nail looks now. And here's what the difference is between the photos uh, at, at full resolution here. So you can see what that depth of field does. Much more detail in the background at f4 compared to f1.8. Everything just blurs out in a nice buttery, smooth manner. Just a snapshot at f5.6 here to show you the little S-curve of the path I was walking. Now here's one down of a puddle. Just got the camera really low, focused on that rock there. And again, the foreground butter and the background butter is just awesome in my opinion. I always like the way that the Seven Artisans lenses like render, you know, like the out of focus area. They, they have like a, a distinct like look to them and I've always liked it. Um, so this is the first autofocus Seven Artisans lens and so far I'm very impressed with it. So the sharpness here is looking pretty good. The depth of field is very shallow though, so it's uh, only sharp in a limited area of the log. Now this one, I stopped it down to f4, so we'll see it's gonna be significantly more sharp because the depth of field is much larger, you know, and it's a, just a little bit sharper at f4 as well. Now, a couple more snapshots here, just some flowers here, little, little uh, budding flowers on the tree branch. And this one just has some nice 3D pop. It's just a three, tree branch and, you know, the background is so far away that it really just kind of pops out at you, you know? So I found this old beer can laying in the uh, leaves, so I posed it on this little stump. And it was pretty cool. It was like a pretty good subject to just test this lens out. And you can see how, you know, the sky renders here through the trees, nice and uh, nice and smooth. Now here's just this these like little small 
they look like little tiny pine trees or whatever, but it's kind of like moss. So I took a picture of that. I thought it looked really cool. Again, I'm just layering the depth of field by having the rock in the foreground and so forth. Here's just another one. I focused on whatever this white stuff is. I thought it looked pretty cool. So here's another tree branch, and I just focused on this part of the tree branch, again, to illustrate the depth of field play you can get with this lens. Very, very impressive 3D pop you can get. Now, same shot, I just focused on the tree trunk itself for this frame. So you can see the difference just by the focus moving, you know? So now the focus is halfway up the tree branch, let's say. Now it's on the tree trunk. So that's just more depth of field play. I just want to really show you what this lens is capable of. Now here's just a shot of the water tower. And if I zoom in, let's see it's looking pretty good. Is that f1.8? Now closer to the water tower, here's a shot of the fence. And here's a shot through the fence. So you can see what it looks like when shooting through a fence. Now here's one looking up towards the top of the tower. I was actually trying to focus on these because I wanted to see how the fringing was going to be controlled. You could see there is a little bit of green fringing there on this extremely high contrast. I just focused on the water tower itself and now that you can see the fence buttering out. And if we look up here, you could see I don't really see any fringing up there at all. Just another depth of field play. Here's just another one to check for fringing. And usually you'll see it like on these lines in a high contrast area, but like I said, this lens is very well controlled, especially when you factor in the cost of this lens. Now here's just a quick snapshot portrait of Layla. She was kind enough to pose for me. You had a good day? I'm recording video now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a good day. I you were chatting it up with your friends? Let's see how close I can get here. Oh. Um, so you can see that background butter is looking pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> Layla thinks it's funny when I say butter. You can see this is a great portrait lens option, especially if you're on a budget. Jace just got this really cool pogo stick. Just took a quick snapshot of it here. And here he is checking it out for the first time. He's very excited. And if I uh, zoom in, you can see it just looks really good. This lens is very pleasing, in my opinion, for a portrait lens. I just really like the way it renders. It's almost like a little bit softer, like on the skin tones or something, um, the way it, that it renders that color. It's really cool. Now, here he is, uh, Poe going away. All right, guys, so after going over the sample photos and sample video, I'm very impressed with this lens, especially for the price point of $230 approximately. That is absolutely incredible, in my opinion, for the optical quality that this produces. And in addition, this lens actually offers like a little bit of a look to it, and I actually really like it. It's a very smooth, uh, out of focus rendering and the corner sharpness in the lab testing was also really impressive. I was surprised. I honestly didn't expect it to be as sharp as it is. Um, one thing, two things I don't like about the lens is the focus ring is very difficult to turn. It's like really stiff. I'm sure it'll loosen up a little bit over time. And same thing with the manual aperture ring. It's just like really stiff. Um, but you know, it's not like the end of the world, especially when you look at the price point of this lens. So full frame F1.8 50 millimeter portrait lens for $230 with very good optical quality. It's really incredible. Actually, if I was on a super budget and I needed a portrait lens, I would, this is one of the ones I would consider for sure, in my opinion. So I hope this helps you out. All right, guys. So that about wraps up this review. I hope you got what you were looking for. And in the description area, there'll be links and stuff like that. If you want to check this lens out and uh, in addition if you can give me a thumbs up I'd really appreciate it and it'd be even cooler if you hit that subscribe button as well all right guys I'll catch up with you next time take care